go ahead and get started on assignment four. Um, it's kind of an introduction to Tableau and how we can use it for um, various data visualization techniques, I guess. Um, I want to introduce it though with our data set before we get started in Tableau. Um, here's our Tableau icon. We'll click on it in just a moment, but uh, first I want to show you a uh, slide that I've put together actually just for my simplicity to make sure that I, I met all my requirements, but I think it's also useful um, to introduce you to the data set so you understand what we're working with and um, why, you know, why we're measuring things in certain ways. Um, so there are certain requested variables that we were we were asked to find in our data set to use as our you know what we're paying attention to. Um, we want to make sure we're satisfying those requirements, and then uh, we'll there are some requested styles and locations. So this will hopefully explain in the future why um, you know certain variables are delineated by shape versus color or size. Um, so first we were asked to uh, include a reasonable predictor variable. Um, for us, that's going to be the number of hours training. So anywhere from 0 to 22 hours of training, um, each individual will have a data point on. And then later we'll, we'll calculate a z-score for that as well so we can standardize that and, and be able to compare across other samples. But um, we'll get into that in more detail later. We're also asked to have a reasonable outcome variable. We'll use skill competency score. The range for this was 0 to 243 just um, for your information. That could be anything from, you know, um, sup you know, superior rating scales or, um, you know, perhaps there's a, a knowledge-based test or a skill-based test. Um, so essentially what we're looking at here is, does the number of hours training predict um, your skill competency? Um, so then we were asked to uh, have a continuous demographic variable. For that we're going to use age. The range is from 0 to 75. Um, for this continuous demographic variable we were asked to have it vary by size discreetly. So each um, individual's age will appear as a data point on this scatter plot. And depending on how old you are will uh, indicate how large your, your size is of your data point. So the really large data points are for older individuals. Um, and then we were asked to have three different levels of categorical demographic variables. So um, we have one for with two levels, one with three, and one with four. For the two-level demographic variable, we're using gender. Uh, male is one and female is two. For those, they'll vary by color. So male will be one color and female will be another. Um, and they'll each have a trend line for uh, their, their particular sample. So there'll be a male trend line and a female trend line. Um, then for our three-level categorical demographic variable, we are using ethnicity. So we'll use um, white, black, and Hispanic. Um, and those will vary by column. So essentially each of these samples will be compared against themselves. So it'll be like three scatter plots next to one another. And each of those ethnicities will have their own trend line as well. Um, then we have a four-level categorical demographic variable. We're using work team, which is work teams number one, two, three, and four. So um, you could use other examples. You could use, you know, shift one, shift two, shift three, or whatever the, the variable of interest is. But for us, for simplicity, we're just going to use work teams one, two, three, and four. And those are going to vary by shape. So work team one might be a plus sign, and work team two might be a triangle. Um, and hopefully that'll help kind of give you an idea when we get into this. Um, why there's so many different symbols and sizes and colors and um, it's just for to help us understand the data better. Um, and then at the end we'll use a tooltip descriptor. Um, that's going to use our raw scores um, of our predictors and our outcomes to kind of give a, a profile of each data point. So we'll be able to hover over that and get some really valuable information about um, that data point and all of these other variables and how they relate to that. So hopefully this helped introduce you to the data before we get started. Um, I'm going to go ahead and open up Tableau. And I'm going to connect to an Excel file. The one I want to use is this one. And it's going to load into our workbook. If you notice here, um, this is where our Excel file is. You can add more than one and you can have multiple sheets if you need to compare, you know, various samples or something like that. Um, so we're in our data source right now. 
let's go ahead and look at um, changing some variables. So a lot of these um, variables are automatically placed in as numeric variables. We want to go ahead and change those to string variables. Um, and the reason we want to do that is because, say, gender, for example, well, hang on just one second. Oh, motherfucker. 